Hello guys and welcome to Hudson Champions League, the existing round first leg. Finally, our favorite competition is back, and of course, our favorite tipsters, Dani Fisichella. Hello, Alvaro. Ciao, ciao. Hello. Ciao, ciao, everyone. Ready to analyze these four uh, games uh, with big uh, favorites, we have to say, and also big underdogs. So let's try to find good odds uh, in these games. Remember, guys, as always, we want to uh, enjoy Champions League with you. So share your comments and, of course, press the like, subscribe. Let's go on now with the show. Well, two games on Tuesday, two games on Friday, as I said, uh, big favorites, uh, especially the first game we are going to analyze uh, in the Parken Stadium in Denmark, Copenhagen, Man City. Imagine how favorite is Man City that uh, the citizens to win away is only 1.28. Uh, so perhaps, uh, Danny, there is some value on Copenhagen if we trust their home form. We saw them in the Champions League, uh, very strong, beating Man United, beating Galatasaray, even Bayern had a torrid time in Denmark. So why not back somehow Copenhagen here? Because they are much, much weaker than Manchester City. And I think Manchester City are going to roll past over them. But let's talk about Copenhagen a little bit and congratulate them for this historic qualification thanks to two wins at Parken. Only one point from the first three games, Copenhagen. Everyone thought they were out, but they took the lead against Bayern, against Galatasaray, missed the penalty Old Trafford, and we saw things coming. They are a very hard-working team. They are fourth for balls recovered in the Champions League. They came very close to win in uh, Munich. And I think it's a team that now is getting a little bit more experience from the previous campaign. And they try to play a little bit more on the attack. But if you look at the numbers, they are obviously a counter-attacking team. 80% pass accuracy, the lowest amongst the qualified teams. You know who the top team is for pass accuracy. So Manchester City are going to just pass, pass, pass. And I think they're going to play them out the park. And if you allow me <laughs> the, the, the pun. Um, they haven't played a competitive match since the 3rd of December. I know the home form of Copenhagen is strong. Only lost three of the last 15 home matches in the European uh, competition. And they strengthened the team. A couple of signings in San January. McKenna from Nottingham Forest. He's a Scotland international. Rusmas, Rus Runarsson from Arsenal. He's a very experienced squad. The likes of Vavro, for example, Lareger. These are players that played in Italy. Grabara is a Polish international, the goalkeeper. So yes, there is a strong backbone. But Manchester City, 10 wins in a row, eight of which by two goals or more. And they've done it year on year. Comes January, February, they start winning, 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 winning. They're going to win the league. They're going to win probably another trophy. They're going to get as far as possible in the, ch in, in the Champions League. Probably going to get to the final. And I think the scary things with Manchester City is that they got a lot of ro a room for improvements, especially at the back. Only two clean sheets in the last 13 games. But if you look at the, at the numbers of Manchester City, I know that away from home, they've not been... Then they've not been amazing recently. No Champions League away clean sheet this season. Also, they considered to Seville in the Super Cup. Last season, they only won one of the last five away games, excluding the final Druni 1 1 at Leipzig, Bayern, Real Madrid. And apart from the Etihad, they've only blown away two teams on the road Sporting 5 0 in 2022 and Seville 4 0 last year. But I think this is going to be one of those. I think they're going to win at least by two goals margin. I like the Asian handicap, minus 175, 205 for Manchester City. Mm -hmm. Recently, Alvaro, actually, Man City, they took a, a cautious approach when they play away. We saw it uh, last season, as Danny reminded us. Uh, do you yeah. think they are going to take this approach or you agree with Danny and they are going to pass the train over Copenhagen? Uh, the thing is that even if they take... Uh cautious approach. And what is a cautious approach anyway by Manchester City? Um, Pep Guardiola is not going to change the shape of the team. Pep Guardiola is not going to play more and more defenders. If anything, a cautious approach for Manchester City is uh, banning his best players from taking risks, which is something that he did last year 
around this time round. Uh, I remember that Jack Grealish and Riyad Mahrez, especially on the flanks last year, they didn't dribble. They just got the ball and control it and hold it a little bit for the whole defense to join the attacking sequence. So that is uh, that is what Pep Guardiola would consider um, a defensive approach. But I don't think that uh, uh, even that defensive approach will prevent uh, that potential defensive approach will prevent Manchester City from uh, winning this game or definitely going through and um, scoring. I believe that uh, the big question for me is how many goals can Manchester City score in this game uh, if they will be content scoring one and then keeping it simple or if they will go for the second one because let's don't forget that the Premier League title race is pretty nice this season. Daniel has said that Manchester City is going to win the league. Yes, they are the favourites, but uh, they have to carve out and um, fight yeah. hard because Liverpool and Arsenal, you know, I think that they are good sides. Uh, Arsenal especially, I'm very surprised, I'm very impressed by them. What they did against West Ham United was a statement. So I think Manchester City, yes, they are going to win it. And the money for me is obviously uh, in the individual market, Haaland to score 162. He was the saviour against Everton. Um, let's don't forget that Manchester City hasn't won any of the last first halves. In the Premier League, they drew with Brentford, Brentford one all in the first half. They drew with Everton nil nil in the first half, and then they did the job in the second half. Um, but uh, Haaland was the player who made the difference against Everton. So Haaland to score 162, I kind of like that. But uh, you know, rather than the individual market, I would focus where the money is. And the pants and Barner is where he's on Manchester City winning both halves. Yes. That pays 263. And I think that, yes, it's a bit of a risky bet, but it's riskier with some other actors or some other uh, sides. With Manchester City winning both halves, it's not that crazy. I could go for that one, but I prefer, obviously, the halftime, full-time, home, uh, sorry, away and away, 185. I like this one. Um, Manchester City has some things to improve. I think that Guardiola's aerial power is nowhere near what Aymeric Laporte was offering last season. So over there, uh, we saw in Neil Mopé's goal the other day, that Ake and, um, and uh, Guardiol didn't defend well Tony, but still, I think that Manchester City is better. And full credit to Copenhagen, because they were, for me, one of the best sides in the group stage. Uh, but as uh, Daniel said, they haven't uh, played football in two months, and that's uh, something that we shouldn't forget. They are playing the Atlantic Cup. We have yes, to that's true. <laughs> Winter time, uh, well, no um, doubts uh, for you. Man City is the favorite. They will win at the Parken Stadium now with Haaland back, with the Bruin back. They have the best uh, 11 possible for Guardiola to be in the quarterfinal, the current champion. Let's uh, see the next game on Tuesday as well. We have uh, RB Leipzig, uh, Real Madrid. Uh, here, Real Madrid are the favorites, but... Be careful, even the odds are good if you are back in Real Madrid. 2.3 is very important to listen to the team news in this game, Álvaro, because we saw probably the best game for Real Madrid this season, 4-0 against Girona. They almost won the title after that victory, but Bellingham is injured. He's going to miss this game, and Real Madrid have so many problems in the defense line without Rudiger, for instance. Uh, that uh, they might suffer traveling to Leipzig and with a tall guy like uh, Sesco in, in the attacking line. Yeah, because in defense, Real Madrid will play most potentially with Nacho and Carvajal, I'm guessing, or Nacho and Chouameni. Uh, by the way, Carvajal and Chouameni did a very good job uh, stopping Girona and stopping another tall guy like uh, Chigankov, the Girona striker. Uh, you know, I think that... Perhaps the perception in Europe is that a uh, side like Leipzig, Leipzig can be dangerous for Real Madrid, but I honestly don't think that in 180 minutes are going to be dangerous for Real Madrid. I really don't think so. And uh, the game that Real Madrid played on Saturday against Girona was a warning for everyone. In the same way that Bayer Leverkusen's win was a warning for the Bundesliga, the win that Real Madrid collected the other day was a warning for Europe. Real Madrid is for real this season, and I'm not going to stop saying this. I know that they've got their injuries, many injuries, most of them in the centre-back position. Now Jude Bellingham is going to be out for three weeks. But still, um, if this generation of footballers take it seriously for five or six years, Real Madrid are going to win multiple domestic titles, and they are going to be favourites to win the Champions League year after year. Because they've got the youth, they've got the energy, and an irresistible um, inspiration up front, especially by a player like Vinicius, 
who is one of the best forwards in the world, and he's been like this for two years. Really, Real Madrid is very dangerous. And I know that Leipzig, you know, they've got the counter-attack, they've got good strikers, then Dani Olmo and uh, Sesco and Xavi Simons and Openda, especially, they can be um, players who can score a goal uh, at any time. I don't, um, I don't deny that, but, uh, you know... I think that, for example, Leipzig is not a time. It's not a team that goes very well for the duels. Uh, they are 16th only in the Bundesliga for duels won, and Real Madrid is exactly the reverse opposite. I think that they, they do the most successful tackles in La Liga or the most successful tackle percentage in La Liga because, because when they go, they go for the ball, they go for real. Um, I think that the main danger of uh, Leipzig is the crosses from David David, David Raum. Uh, or the sudden unfold, unfolding of counterattacks, but Real Madrid has the physicality to tackle this. And um, Leipzig drew with Osburg in the weekend. I think that Openda could have won the game with the penalty, yeah. but they didn't. And Real Madrid is more dangerous. They've got better players. They've got four players on course to score 20 goals or more this season. This is my favorite bet to, uh, game to bet in the whole show. Uh, I'm going to go for the following. Uh, there are conservative bets that I recommend strongly. A draw no bet for Real Madrid 168. Uh, an Asian handicap Mine is 0.25 for Real Madrid 2.0, meaning that if Real Madrid draws, you suffer only half a lose. If they win, you win. But my favorite one here is Real Madrid to win and over 1.5 goals in the game, 262. And the Vinicius market, which I love because Vinicius is going to take more responsibilities in the absence of Jude Bellingham, is amazing. Vinicius to score or assist, 190. Vinicius to score a brace, which I don't recommend, but again, the money is brilliant. 11, but Vinicius to score or assist 190, and against Girona was terrific. The assist uh, in uh, Jude Bellingham's goal, the first one, is uh, just out of this world, to be honest. Also, the opener in the first five minutes of the game, Real Madrid really informed. There is this question, Dani, about the defense, the centimeters that uh, the Real Madrid defense uh, are <coughs> lacking, and also, on the other hand, Leipzig uh, form only one win in this 2024. They started the year with three defeats and now the draw that Alvaro mentioned. Well, we know Leipzig are good going forward. They play very attacking football with Xavi Simons, Openda, Dani Olmo, of course, Sesco. But the problem is uh, at the back, and sometimes they cannot maintain the same intensity for 90 minutes. In the group stages, we saw them. They were not as good to beat uh, Manchester City, but too strong for the rest. But it was a very weak group with Red Star Belgrade and Young Boys, probably the weakest of all. And they qualified after match day four, which they never done it before. So that tells you how easy was the group for uh, Leipzig. They do live sometimes the self-exposed because they like to go forward quite a lot. Um, they only won one game since uh, 16 December was against Union Berlin. Only one clean sheet in the last 16 games. And I think that should be worrying for uh, Marco Rose especially facing Real Madrid. The attacking numbers are good. Openda, 15 goals this season in the Bundesliga. Eight assists for Raum in the Bundesliga. So very good um, attacking numbers there. Uh, there's been a bit of a turnover in January. They let six players go, including Angelino, Werner, Forsberg, uh, got Elmas from uh, Napoli. And uh, last season they beat no, no, Real Madrid. Not Angelino, no? Angelino, yeah, Roma. went to Rome. Ah, sorry. Yeah, from Roma, Galatasaray. Roma. Galatasaray. Via Galatasaray. They, yeah. they could have... It was Leipzig property. And then, and then he went to... Yeah, absolutely. He was playing for, for Galatasaray. Uh, last season, they beat Real Madrid. They won 3-2. But only four of those players who started that game will probably starting on Tuesday. Obviously, the missing Shobolzai and Kunku. They're the two main ones that are going to be there. But yeah, there's been, there's been a few changes in the lineups of uh, Leipzig. And I think, yes, Real Madrid only lost one game in La Liga this season. They always conceded away in the Champions League goal, though. So they qualified comfortably, but the, the, the games of Real Madrid have been fun to watch. And I think, you know, if you look at the game against Napoli, against Union Berlin, the big goals there. So yeah, the over 2.5 goals, I think, is a good one. I do like Real Madrid to win. My best one is uh, Real Madrid to score the first goal, 178. I think this is brilliant. Better pedigree, better experience, better players overall. Yeah, they should win and score the first goal in Leipzig. Mm -hmm. Real Madrid lost uh, last season, but they uh, they were almost qualified in the group. Yes. Stage, so they didn't take that game very seriously. And I think the way of uh, play 
of playing by Leipzig uh, benefits uh, Real Madrid. Uh, we saw it on Saturday against Girona. We saw it uh, against Barcelona in the Super Cup. The teams that want to play against Real Madrid and expose themselves, as, as Danny is uh, saying, get hurt against uh, Real Madrid. And we've seen it uh, this season. They are very good in the counter-attack. Let's see who plays uh, from for Bellingham. Brahim, Joselu, this has to be decided mm, good question. by Ancelotti, being Brahim the favorite, but perhaps it's Joselu and uh, Ancelotti wants to play with a number nine. Uh, let's see this game on Tuesday, Leipzig-Real Madrid. And on Wednesday... We have Lazio, Bayern, Munich. Uh, Bayern really favored 1.7. The big question, Mark Dani, is if uh, Lazio can't hold uh, Bayern Munich in this game and take the tie alive to Munich. Uh, Lazio, they are not having a great season. Uh, they are eighth in Italy, even if they beat Cagliari away, finally winning away for uh, Sarri's men with Immobile scoring again. But Bayern, uh, Dani, they arrive here or to the European competitions, really in need. They are not going to win any domestic cups. Let's see the Bundesliga. It's still uh, possible. But they are hurt domestically, and they have to do something big in Europe this season. It was a very bad performance from Bayern at the weekend. They were completely outplayed by Leverkusen. They only had one shot on target. That's the lowest tally in eight years in the Bundesliga. Harry Kane only had 18 touches. Expected goals for Bayern Munich at the weekend, 0.60. So yeah, really, really poor numbers. 0.27. At 0.27, even worse. I think so, I think so. Yeah, Even worse, even worse. So yeah, they were just... They were just basically not there. They, they, they were not there. But the signs of such a debacle, probably we saw them coming. Even in the reverse fixture, Leverkusen were better than them. Bayern Munich is a team that is a little bit short, especially at the back. They got a lot of injuries at the moment. They haven't quite gelled. And yes, of course, they have got uh, extremely uh, confident and skillful goal scorers. But it's not just about that. I mean, the, the top goal scorer is Harry Kane, of course. 28 goals in 28 games. Second goal scorer is Sané with only nine goals. Perhaps they are over-reliant on Kane. He's been perfect so far this season. But when he has a bad day, they also have a bad day. They strengthen the team in general with Dyer, Boy, Zaragoza. But Zaragoza is, is injured. So, you know, it, it, obviously the team wasn't perfect at the beginning of the season. I think letting Pavard go was probably a mistake. The player didn't want to stay, but they didn't replace him. Uh, they didn't replace him uh, well. However, uh, they haven't gone past the quarterfinals in the last three years, Bayern Munich, but they only lost two of the last 13 away matches in the Champions League to Manchester City and Villarreal. So despite being underwhelming in the big competition, they still are very, very good away from home. And of course, in the group stages, they navigate it through very, very easily, but they're used to it. Comes to Lazio, this is going to be a very difficult challenge for them. Uh, the home four for Lazio was so important. They got seven points out of 10 at the Olimpico. But... Mm. One point came on the 95th minute with Provedel scoring against Atletico Madrid. The, the, the winning against Chelsea, the Celtic came late with two goals from Immobile who came from the bench. And Pedro scored late a Celtic part to win that game. So it's really a game of tight margins, of fine margins for Lazio. And uh, the problem is that this season, they're really not scoring enough goals. They got the 11th attack in Serie A. In uh, the Champions League, they only had 24 attempts to target, and that's the lowest record between the qualified teams. Average 46 possession. Only Dortmund and Copenhagen have got worse numbers between the qualified teams. And Bayern Munich are going to keep the ball, start them out of possession. Lazio, this season, they're not able to push the line so high to conquest the ball up, up front, and they don't really enjoy big spells of possession. And I think with these numbers and also with the struggles of keeping it tight, they're going to suffer massively. Yes, the numbers are at home domestically have improved. But if you look at that, they coincided with the Champions League ending. So as soon as the Champions League ended, they got better in the league. And I think they can really only manage one competition at a time. Maybe the Coppa Italia had a push. I think this is, a, is, this is probably the biggest mismatch in, in the Champions League at the moment. Bayern Munich are going to win. They're going to win easily. Uh, probably 2-0. Asian handicap minus one for the Bavarians, 207. Well, in 2021, it was a 4-1 victory yes. for Bayern Munich at the Olympico against uh, Lazio. Uh, no... A much stronger Lazio, I would say. 
back then, much stronger than this. Do you think also this is a one-sided uh, tie, Alvaro? Uh, a one-sided tie, yes. A one-sided game, I want to see that because Bayern comes at the back of a defeat. Uh, I'm sure that um, we all expect a reaction from Bayern, but uh, reactions sometimes uh, are not so easy to, to trigger or to carry out because uh, you need a, a team committed and a team uh, with the readiness to to come back and to make amendments. And I was a little bit worried when I heard Thomas Muller at the end of the game yeah. against uh, Leverkusen saying that he was pissed off. And if he was complaining, pissed off, he literally said that. I mean, it's not because I'm making up this. And uh, he said that, uh, he hinted that he was very angry with the rigidity of Bayern uh, because uh, we know how, Tom how Thomas Tuchel is. Um, he's a manager uh, who likes to have a, a strong intervention Uh, on what happens on the pitch and uh, Bayer Leverkusen had so much more freedom and probably Thomas Muller was looking at Bayer Leverkusen and, and saying I wish I was playing for this side and not for Bayern I wish I was playing for Hansi Flick in 2020 when I had the freedom to move around uh, and do a little bit uh, some solo jazz on my own but uh, with Bayern Munich right now uh, that uh, possibility of expressing yourself doesn't exist and uh, Bayern looks to me a little bit rigid um, and they are innocuous in possession they were looking for a midfielder for a very long time last summer and at the end they got themselves Eric Tiger who is a hybrid between a center back and a midfielder and I don't think that he has a Bayern level even though I think that Eric Tiger is a fine footballer Um, and one thing that Bayern was capable of doing in the past was unchaining a furious storm of football. Now they don't do that. They don't do that. And they are very reliant on Harry Kane. And when Harry Kane is not having his day or Harry Kane is not having the right amount of supply, then Bayern suffers. And on top of that, Bayern had two players who had a lot of personality and... They, they have also uh, this rebellion against the bad results. Uh, one of them was uh, Kinsley Coman and the other one is Serge Snabry. And both of them are still out. And Alfonso Davis is not playing on the left. So important players are not playing there and the midfield doesn't work. I think that Bayern is a favorite for the tie, yes. But this game against Lazio, I want to see how it goes, though. Um, of course, Lazio has uh, among their threats Immobile, 200 goals in the Serie A this weekend. Uh, we know Provedel, good goalkeeper, Pedro scoring in the Champions League. Let's see how much he plays. Uh, Felipe Anderson is hitting good assist numbers, but I think that all these players, normally they are not good enough uh, for the Champions League. This is my opinion. Lazio hasn't been in the Champions League, Champions League quarterfinal for 24 years. Uh, you know, I'm going to focus here on the individual market. I think Harry Kane can make a difference. Harry Kane to score 183 or Harry Kane to score or assist 162. Uh, when it comes to winning or losing, Bayern is the favorite, but you know, Since I expect a reaction, but I don't know if that reaction is going to come, I prefer to commit to the individual market here. And the money for me is elsewhere in some other games. Mm -hmm. Well, three big favorites, uh, and you place them as favorites, Man City, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich. This is uh, European pedigree, of course. Uh, still good odds if you back uh, Bayern Munich 1.7, especially Real Madrid. 2.3 and the other big favorite is PSG against the uh, Real Sociedad is 1.73 PSG to win remember that they came second in their uh, group uh, Real Sociedad was one of the surprises of the first uh, uh, stage uh, because they beat uh, Inter and took or drew both games and they mm -hmm. took the first uh, spot in that group also with uh, Benfica but Real Sociedad Alvaro, they are suffering lately because they yeah. don't score goals for games. Without a goal, they are also alive in the cup competition. It's uh, a lot of games, a lot of injury problems. Uh, and PSG, they rested even Mbappé uh, at the weekend uh, to play this crucial game for Luis Enrique's uh, project. Uh, any gap for a surprise here, in your opinion, can Real Sociedad compete as well as they did against Inter, for instance, against this PSG? 100%. I really think that Real Sociedad is going to be competitive. Of course, I am totally aware of the run of Real Sociedad. They've been, a, I've got the, the number here, 384 minutes uh, without a scoring uh, goal. And last season, they went through a very similar uh, patch as well. Um, it looks like Real Sociedad every year half a period in which they don't score, but then they finish the season in a strong fashion, always. Maybe, uh, just to tackle a little bit the bad mood, uh, because Oyarzabal 
is very likely not to feature Ano Yarzabal is the best striker Real Sociedad has. Um, Real Sociedad has uh, announced today, right now, the contract extension of Kubo until 2029, which is great news for Real Sociedad. It's very good news. Kubo uh, missed uh, January and a bit of February as he was um, on international duty playing for Japan. Uh, so his comeback is going to be so important for Real Sociedad. Look, if uh, Mbappé wouldn't play for Paris Saint-Germain and Cavani would be the striker or Lavezzi would be playing on the left, I will tell you that this is 50-50. Since Mbappé plays, uh, I think that uh, Paris Saint-Germain has to be the favorite, but not so much. Um, in the weekend, they beat Lille 3-1. I think that for this game, Skriniar and Kim Pembe are going to be still out. Uh, well, uh, PSG has a strong squad. Uh, I'm sure that Luis Enrique will find a way to place a competitive uh, pair of centre-backs. Uh, in the weekend, they rotated, as you said. Uh, not only Mbappé, but Ther Emery or Achraf Hakimi didn't play either. And he's 16 games unbeaten for PSG. Uh, which is not too bad. It's not too bad. But when it comes to Real Sociedad, my biggest issue is the fact that Oyarzabal won't be playing and that uh, Umar Sadik and Andres Silva, for one reason or another, they don't look too convincing to me uh, yet. But uh, still, um, I'm going to go for the following. I'm going to back Real Sociedad somehow with an Asian handicap plus one for Real Sociedad, 180. I think that this is pretty decent. Uh, Real Sociedad is the kind of team that annoys you a lot because they pressure up front and they are the team in La Liga all together with Getafe that do more tactical faults. They stop the play constantly, interrupt you. And I think that PSG, especially in midfield and at the back, they can suffer from this pressure and this suffocation from Real Sociedad. As I say, Asian Handicap plus one for Real Sociedad, 180. Mm -hmm. They lost at the weekend against Sosasuna, but before that, they only lost to Real Madrid, Barcelona and Atlético de Madrid and competing very well. Danny, you saw them against Inter in the group stages. Uh, do you agree with Álvaro? Do you think uh, this is going to be a close game? Inter suffered a lot against La Sociedad. I think he's the team against whom Inter suffers the most this season, both home and away. At one point, at San Siro, Real Sociedad had almost 70% possession. And I think the performances of Real Sociedad this season have been much better than the results. Um, sometimes when the energy goes down, they lose a little bit of momentum, of course, because they press really high. They are sixth for balls recovered in the Champions League. They haven't scored many goals. They have the problem of killing games. They only got the seventh best attack in La Liga also against Inter, perhaps in the first game, they should have scored at least another one. Mom, the majority of the goals come in the first minutes with Real Sociedad. They do press high, they're very energetic, and sometimes they catch the other uh, team cold, but they've been a breath, a breath of fresh air, really, uh, this season. And I think they, they will relish themselves going against the top, the very best in Europe. That's what this club is all about, obviously relishing the challenges. But, you know, it is difficult to predict because there is a team that is struggling scoring against Against another one that cannot keep clean sheet, no clean sheet in the last five games for Paris Saint Germain. They are unbeaten in 15, winning 11 of them, but uh, they've been relying a lot on Mbappé. He scored 12 times in the last nine matches, and I do understand why they gave him a little bit of rest uh, to him at the weekend. But where is actually Mbappé scoring? playing now at the moment because he's playing through the middle with the Barcola on one side and either Colomuani and Dembele on the other side which goes against most of the things we thought about in the, in, in the preseason you know uh, playing with three strikers maybe with Gonzalo Ramos a bit more like a, a reference focal point so Luis Enrique has changed again uh, let's see if that's the that's the right balance for them look I think PSG have squeezed through the group of death in very, very polemic circumstances. They've yeah. only been fully convincing against Milan at home and Borussia Dortmund in the first game. But the other games, they think they were below par quite a lot. That draw in Dortmund, yeah, they were a little bit lucky. And of course, the penalty against the Newcastle. That, yeah, I mean, let, let's leave it there. Uh, I don't think Real Sociedad uh, are going to continue not to score. I trust them to find a goal, but against PSG at home, difficult to keep clean sheet. Both to score, 184. Mm -hmm. Well, they had a lot of chances against uh, Borussia Dortmund, but uh, also they conceded a lot of conceded, yeah. uh, opportunities to the rival. Do you think this is a better side, PSG, under Luis Enrique or under Gal Galtier? Uh, uh I cannot, I cannot say, really, because the group stage, uh, for me, was very disappointing by Paris, of course. It was the group of death. Uh, I want to see it now. 
I want to see it now. Uh, Paris Saint Germain, the seasons are defined in February. I want to see it now. I'll give you an answer in a month time. It seems to me they are a little bit more disciplined under Luis Enrique. With Galtier, I had the feeling they started to wander around and do their own things that they used to do. I think it seems that they are more focused, but yeah, I agree with Alvaro. Can't, can't uh, uh, one thing that uh, we shouldn't forget is that uh, for some reason Luis Enrique uh, relinquished his principles in the group stage, uh, playing with the 4 to 4 when Luis Enrique loves yeah. midfielders. And uh, he did that at San Jens Park. And after that defeat, because it was a very, very, very uh, noisy defeat, uh, he changed and he learned. And Ther Emery became more important. Fabian Ruiz is playing more minutes. I think that from that loss in autumn until now, uh, PSG is more defined by the quality of the midfield and the possession than it was. Uh, back at the beginning of the season. So there has been an evolution, but I want to see how it goes. Mm -hmm. Well, the pressure is on PSG. Uh, for Real Sociedad, this is a bonus track. It's one of the most important games in Real Sociedad history, but uh, they've achieved uh, already the goal of qualifying uh, through the knockout stages, whereas for PSG, of course, they must go through and beat Real Sociedad if the project, or if Luis Enrique wants to continue with the project in Paris. Uh, well, four big favorites for this uh, first week. Uh, I guess we are going to see much more balanced games in the following week uh, with Atletico de Madrid Inter, for instance, as one of the best uh, ties. Uh, yeah. Tell me, guys, uh, which one is your safe bet, Dani Fisichella? Bayern Munich to conquer Rome to win 163. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By the way, now that you said Bayern Munich and Rome together, I just read that Bild is uh, informing that Mourinho is learning German because he's uh, been linked with Bayern Munich. He wants to win all. Makes five, perfect sense. Uh, Makes perfect sense. All five leagues uh, together mm -hmm. with the Portuguese, yeah, Italian, well. Spanish, and uh, Premier League, and it's already in the rumors to uh, be the next manager after Tuchel. And yeah. it sounds weird, but the uh, weirdest things we've seen in this world. And Alvaro, you <laughs> say that? Well, he should learn Arabic, by the way. Um, <laughs> my safe bet is Asian Handicap plus 0 0.25 for Real Madrid, 150. And the Asian Handicap plus 0 0.25 for Real Madrid. Real Madrid to score over 1.5 goals, Asian handicap minus 0.25 for Manchester City in the first half. Altogether, four. Danny? Copenhagen, Manchester City, over three goals. Real Madrid, Asian handicap zero, and Bayern Munich, Asian handicap minus one. Altogether, six, 67. I have to say that there is an uh, easy safe uh, ACA in this match day, going for all the favorites, all four favorites, uh, to win, and the odds are 8.5. I just calculated. Mm. Yeah, Interesting. Media, if you go for PSG, Bayern, Real Madrid, mm -hmm. Man City, all to win, 8.5. Well, thank you, Alvaro. Thank you, Dani. Next week, we have more Champions League. Bye-bye. Ciao. Bye.